welcome to today's video all right we're going to be putting these screaming eagle 204 cams into a fat boy there we are 204s let's get started all right obviously we've got to get the exhaust and everything off so once we get that out of the way we'll give you um, the easiest way to get into the push rod tubes um, pretty easy to do just with a flat screwdriver I'll show you in a second basically all you do is Grab your flat screwdriver, place it in between the little groove for the um, clip there and just twist it out. Pretty straightforward. Now we can lift it up, get our finger in there, feel the intake push rod. Now with the back wheel jacked up, we can touch the, foot, touch the push rod there and we can wind the back wheel over and then we know when the push rod's going up, the intake valve's opening. Obviously when the push rod's going down, it's coming down so it's on the uh, compression stroke so we just take some bolt cutters once we've got it on top dead centre and we literally just cut them straight out and um, get them out of the way alright so that's all out of the way we get the o-rings out of those we're going to replace all the o-rings and everything can those lifter blocks have got to come off later anyway but um, we'll get this cam cover open and we'll show you guys inside there and get everything out and um, go through a bit of it so basically once we get this cover off, um, we're going to undo everything in there and block off some of the oil oil um, drains for the pickup for the oil pump. So just a cam locking tool there going in just so it doesn't rotate while I undo them. Undo the sprocket bolts, get those off out of the way, slide the cam plate out. When we do that on a soft tail, you've got the feed line there for the oil, so it's going to continue to run out of there. But what I do is just grab a squishy little ear plug. I just put the strainer back up the top there, but I just grab a squishy little earplug, pop in there, and it literally stops the oil and it holds it for um, as long as I need to. So, pretty handy tip for anyone going to do that. Just pop a little earplug in there and it stops all the oil draining out. Simple. All right, we're just checking the crankshaft run out here. So, uh, it's a bit hard to see because I'm shaking the camera as I'm trying to rotate the back wheel, but we've only got two thousandths of an inch run out, which is well and truly within spec it's absolutely fine nothing wrong with that at all so that's all good to go but um yeah you should always always check that when you're doing a cam job it, it it takes it takes two minutes to do it's very very easy all right we've got to get these cam bearings out of there they're the standard cam bearings so this puller tool down here is is great for that basically you slide it in the bearing sitting in the case, the tool goes inside the bearing, we wind up this end here and basically what it does, it spreads the end of that tool out into the bearing and then we wind up this nut and it just basically pulls the bearing out of the out of place as, as shown here. So winding up the big nut there and the bearing pops loose out of the case, pop it out. Alright, so here's the new bearing, so this is the full complement one. The, uh, the bearings are much more stronger bearing, all the needle rollers are butted up against one another, it supports a lot more load than the standard unit, as you can see it's a caged needle roller, so not as strong, um, but yeah, it's a $30 investment when you're doing a cam job, so every cam job I do I put one of those in just for, just for safe measure, it's just, yeah, it's a very cheap insurance policy. Alright, the oil pump. The oil pump on this bike looks absolutely fine. There's no issues with it whatsoever. A couple of um, things to point out here. You may see some wear on the ins on the outer side here that I'm about to point to just there. Uh, any marks and, and, and scoring there is not is nothing to worry about. There's no oil pressure being pressurised there. The oil gets transferred between the galleys here, between these ports. And if you have bad scoring between those ports, you are going to lose oil pressure. So that's where you have to be concerned, not on the outer outer lip. So uh, the G rotors look fine on this one as well. Like you can see some witness marks there, but I can't feel anything with my fingernail. So I'm more than happy to reuse this pump. It's absolutely fine. So we'll clean that up and get that back in. So basically, it just it, it's in, indexed onto the crankshaft there. Obviously, that's that's the way that oil pump works. Uh, it's making sure it's gone into the O-ring there and seating the G-rotor inside the housing. All right, cam time. So new cams, they have some timing marks on them. It's pretty easy to get right. You just line up the two dots on the gears there, 
pretty straightforward. Set them down, pop the chain on, and uh, just verify the timing. Once you've got the chain on, you can see that the timing is right because the two dots are lined up. You'll notice if it's out of tooth, it'll be it'll be a mile out. So you can't really muck that up. And once you slip the uh, cam plate back on, I like to just grab the drive sprocket of the um, the cam drive sprocket and just rotate the cams just to make sure everything's free and and working as it should once everything's all put back into place and 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 good to go. So yeah, just turn it with your fingers there. You can see that it's you know it's all free. There's nothing binding. And uh, as I said, I like to grab the drive sprocket and just sit it on there and you can just grab it and you can feel, you, can, you got a better feel through there and you can just actually feel it's, it's turning fine. So nothing to worry about there. Just something good to practice. All right, also like to, um, yeah, run the drive sprocket on there when I'm putting the camshafts back into the um, cam chest because it allows you to, you know, just, you can, you can rotate the camshafts a lot easier with there on. You can see there it's turning free, so... We've got to get these bolts tightened up on the oil pump. There is a sequence. Uh, you have to rotate the uh, back wheel so you get the crankshaft spinning. That centers the oil pump on the cam plate and the crankshaft, and then you nip up the bearing up. You nip up the bolts and tighten everything up. And there is a sequence of that. So yeah, check your manual for that. All right, the offset between the drive sprocket and the cam sprocket must be checked. You can see here I've got a gap there. It actually measured at about twenty thousandths. So uh, those shims are available in 10 thou sizes, so I was lucky enough to go up to uh, go up 20 thou from what I had, and um, pretty much zeroed that gap there. So, alrighty, new shims on. You can see the timings per perfect. You know the cam to cam is the two dots are there. We line up the crankshaft. There is a line on the oil pump on the um, cam support plate there. That's all well and good. We've got our timing on our drive sprockets lined up. As Again, you'll know if that's a tooth out, but um, yeah, you just sit those back on there and make sure everything's lined up. Perfect, looks good. Alrighty, the rest of the gear's on, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close that up and um, talk to you about the lifters and how I bleed those up. Basically, all I do is take an oil can, squirt a little bit of oil in the top, and just using your thumb, push the oil down and eventually you'll start to see some oil come out of the bleed hole just above my left thumb there so yeah just so you can start to see some oil come out and you keep doing that until you see no bubbles come out when there's no more bubbles come out you know it's bled up so pop that one in four brand new lifters ready to go this thing's going to be good for as long as it needs to be all right the screaming eagle adjustable push rods they're a great investment because you can swap cams and change things quite easily. So um, you can also set the um, set the clearance, set the uh, lifter bore in its. You'll set the lifter bucket in the bore of the lifter properly because you can measure the threads per inch and count out how many turns you need to get a hundred thou of um, of uh, preload on the lifter because there's two hundred thou of travel in the lifter. We want a hundred, so it's in the middle. Once we get all that done up and set, we know that it's preloaded and, and bled down because I can turn that with my finger and it's quite free. So that's all good. I'll get the front ones done and get that all buttoned up. So that's all on there now. We're um, ready to just refit the exhaust and basically go through the tuning process with this. I'm going to end the video here basically because uh, I need to do a video on some tuning with you guys and take you through that. So... Uh, I'll put in a little clip of the bike idling and just how it sounds when it's got the cam in there. But um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this so far. I'm trying to get um, better at this video stuff. I'm not really, uh, never really done much of this sort of stuff before, but here's what it sounds like anyway. Alrighty, thanks very much guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, as I said, a few things there I've tried to clear up to make sure that um, you guys are getting the correct information. But um, if you have any questions about anything, just drop a comment below and um, stick around for the tuning video that's going to be coming up next. See you next time.